what's happening, Story Makers? The last time we were together, we spoke about Story Mountain and how you use this template to construct your structure for your story, making sure you've got all the parts of a narrative. When I was uh, working on this one, I came up with the idea of a warthog that didn't want to go in the mud with the rest of the warthogs. His name was Charlesworth Oinkington. He was a gentle pig. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my introduction. This is going to be for people who are making storybooks. And if you remember, storybooks are the ones that are driven primarily through the written descriptions, the language and the characterization. So if you're not doing a storybook uh, and you're doing a picture book, I've got a link below for the video that shows an introduction for a picture book. But if you're doing a storybook, this is the one that you want to watch. So let's begin. Um, I'm going to start off by reading you a little bit of a great storybook. So this is the gizmo written by um, Paul Jennings and the illustrations were done by Keith McEwen. I never stole anything before. That's why I'm not feeling so good. I think I'm going to be sick all over the stall. I look at the electro electronic gizmos all laid out for people to buy. What if I spew up just as I'm taking something? What if I vomit right when I lean over the counter? Everyone at the market will look. The police will grab me. They will tell my father. It will be in the papers. Everyone will know about the boy who was sick when he was trying to nick. Oh, go on, says Floggett. Don't be a wimp, he says. He says, standing there in his stolen leather jacket and stolen jeans. He is pointing at one of the gizmos. Quick, knock it off, he says. Why did I agree to this? Why, why, why? Oh, you promise, says Floggett. He holds up the spanner that he stole from the lady on the tool store. You promised to nick something if I did. So guys, in a very, very short amount of time, Paul Jennings has uh, introduced his main characters. Uh, we're not sure of the main character's name, but we know that he's got a seriously naughty friend named Floggett. And uh, he's, Paul Jennings has he's pulled us right into the story straight away with a really exciting opener about a little boy who's being peer pressured to steal something from a shop. Now, what Paul Jennings does so well is he engages all of the senses. We know how our character is feeling, what, what he can see, what he can hear, the things that are happening around him straight away, very, very quickly. So that's what we want to do with our story. We want to introduce our, our characters and uh, our setting as quickly as we can and we want to make it as interesting as possible. Now, um, another thing that he does is he uses a, a technique which we call show, don't, tell. Now, show, don't tell is when you sort of just sort of describe their actions and then you let your reader come to the conclusion of uh, whether they're a good or a bad person. So, Paul Jennings, like we know Floggett, this little guy over here who's telling the other, other boy to steal. Uh, we know he's not a good kid. And we know just by Paul, uh, the, the actions that Paul Jennings has written on. So he's obviously, he's standing there, he's got a stolen jacket on, he's got stolen uh, jeans on, he's telling, uh, the other the other boy to steal something because he did he's a bad guy now we didn't he Paul Jennings didn't have to write that he's a bad guy he just uh, had to describe some of the things that he was doing for us to make up our own mind about his character we know that uh, you know it's obviously a really busy market and uh, there's lots of people around we know how this little boy is feeling uh, he's feeling nervous talking about being sick so he's engaging all of our sen senses and he's showing and not telling when he's writing. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to introduce my character and I'm going to use this template from uh, over here. This is one that I made up and you can find this template in a link in the description down below. Okay, so here I am ready to write my, um, my story setting uh, as part of my introduction. Now. Uh, as I'm introducing my setting and as I'm introducing my main character, I will automatically be creating an interesting story opener. So I don't have to do a separate section just for interesting story opener because uh, it should happen automatically. Now, um, 
Remember guys that this is a storybook intro, which means that I'm gonna be using a lot of descriptive language. Again, if you're writing a picture book, you will use a lot less, uh, a, a, a lot less words or fewer words. So um, if you are writing a picture book, please click on the link down below and uh, look for the introduction writing for a picture book. But if you're writing a storybook, let's get into it. So my setting is the African bush felt. I'm gonna take my template and just write it straight away at the top. So I'm gonna do four things today. I'm gonna show, not tell. I'm gonna uh, write with my senses, what we can see, what we can feel, and what we can hear. So I'm gonna start with, um, I guess, uh, how the place looks and how it feels. That's how I, I generally like to start, but uh, you can, you know, maybe start with uh, what you can hear. It really just depends on your story. So I'm gonna write the first sentence and then I will skip ahead and I'll read you everything that I've got. So I'm thinking of the African bush felt. Um, I'm thinking it's probably a hot place and I know I wanna introduce my warthogs there somewhere. So maybe they're in a, in a, in a nice cool um, muddy pool, enjoying themselves, having a great time, having a blast. So maybe that's where I'll start. Um, so let's Actually, begin. We have my first sentence of my story, or at least my first draft of my first sentence. So what I've got here says, in the scorching heat of the African sun, a pack of warthogs slopped about in a cool pool of squishy, squelchy mud. So I have spoken about, or I've written with my senses, I've uh, written about what we can see and uh, you know, you can see the cool pool of, of mud and I've written about how we feel, you know, it's, uh, it's hot and this, and this mud is nice and refreshing. I'm gonna continue on going, I'm gonna do a little bit of show, don't tell, so I'm gonna um, put some clues in there to let you know uh, how the warthogs feel or how other animals feel and I'm going to talk about uh, what we can hear, what are the sounds that we can hear in this, um, in this story. Okay guys, I officially have the first part of my storybook done. We've, uh, I, well, I've done my, my setting and uh, I'm gonna read it to you and then we're gonna look at it afterwards and see if I've done these things down the side here. Have I shown, not to told? Have I written with my senses about what I can see, what, what we can feel in our setting, what we can hear? So, the African bush felt, right? In the scorching heat of the African sun, a pack of warthogs slopped about in a cool pool of squishy, squelchy mud. Splat! A great big chunk of mud hit one hog square in the snout, while another chunk whizzed by, hitting an unfortunate antelope who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Hey, watch it! The antelope yelled, but the warthogs didn't hear it. They were having way too much fun. Now, guys, let's uh, let's have a let's have a quick look through it and let's see uh, if I've done the things uh, that I said I wanted to do. Okay, number one, have I shown not told? Well, let's have a look. Um, this section with the antelope, he says, "Hey, watch it!" The antelope yelled. Now. Did I need to write that the antelope was annoyed with the hogs, with the, uh, the warthogs that were throwing stuff around and getting mud all over him? Of course I didn't need to say specifically that he was annoyed, but I did say, hey, watch it, the antelope yelled. So I can, my readers can work out that this antelope is really annoyed. So that is the first, uh, the first thing where I've said, show and don't tell. Uh, and that means I can highlight it off my template over here. The second thing, have I written about what I can see? So let's have a look. In the scorching heat of the African sun, a pack of warthogs slopped about in a cool pool of squishy, squelchy mud. Well, I know what we can see. We can see a cool pool of squishy, squelchy mud. And uh, that means I can highlight what we can see in our setting. What do we feel? Well, the pool is cool. And uh, the African sun is, uh, is really, really hot. So we can uh, highlight that off. What can we hear? Well, there's uh, mud whizzing by uh, and uh, there's the antelope yelling out. So we can, uh, we can highlight that off because obviously there's a lot of fun being had. There's a lot of noise happening and it's uh, pretty lively and exciting. So 
that's my that's my setting, my opening, and um, I've I've nailed those four parts. I'm gonna go do the exact same thing, except with my character. And after I've done my character, then my storybook introduction should be completely done. So I'm gonna go work on that now, bring it back, and show you what I've got. Okay. So now, I have finished my character description of Charlesworth Winkington. This is what I've got, guys. So if you remember, the start of our story, uh, the end of the uh, setting ended with, they were having way too much fun. Outrageous behavior, said Charlie. Well, most of the hogs were having fun. Charlesworth Winkington did not play in mud. How could he? He was a sophisticated gentle hog who enjoyed the finer things in life. Things like reading poetry, drinking English breakfast tea, rare bird watching. He was clean, orderly, and well-groomed in his three-piece suit and polka dot bow tie. He did not play in the mud. Number one, uh, outrageous behavior. So Charlie's obviously using very big words. He's got a, uh, a quite a large vocabulary, I suppose. They say he's a sophisticated gentle hog. So we can sort of tell straight away about Charlie that he is a very serious character and he's not a very silly one based on the sort of things that he likes. He likes calm, quiet things like reading poetry, drinking tea, bird watching. So we can tell quite a bit about Charlie's personality without me having to say that he's a very serious character and all that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight show, don't tell. Okay, do we know what Charlie looks like? Uh, yeah, we do. I've written that he wears a three-piece suit and a polka dot bow tie. Uh, of course, you can also communicate this stuff in the pictures as well. Um, so I will mark off what I see about Charlie. Uh, how does he feel? Well, uh, he's exclaiming with the, with the exclamation mark, outrageous behavior, which means that uh, he's obviously feeling very frustrated with the behavior of his friends and family, the other warthogs. So we know how he's feeling. And uh, what does it sound like? Of course, he's... Uh, He's being quite loud, he's exclaiming, you know, outrageous behavior. So I have ticked that section off too. And that's it, guys. That's the uh, first draft of my introduction. I can keep these two pages together and I'm gonna lay it out for when I'm ready to type up my next draft. And you know what? It's probably gonna change a lot from, from this point. I'm not going into too much detail yet. I might add some words. Uh, I might take some away depending on uh, how the rest of the story shapes up. It's kind of an adventure, we'll see how we go. One last thing I do wanna mention before you go off and write uh, your own character description, your own setting description, is that um, it's always good to mix up your sentence length, sentence lengths. So, in the case of my setting here, I've gone, I've said, in the scorching heat of the African sun, a pack of warthogs slopped about in a cool pool of squishy, squelchy mud. Splat. So, two sentences next to each other. The first, a very long sentence. The second sentence isn't really a sentence. It's just a, just a one-worder. So, what you want to do is you want to mix up your sentence lengths. It gets a little bit boring and it drones on and on if the sentences are always long, but you don't want them always short and sharp. Uh, you, you want to have a good mix between the two. Good rule of thumb is if there's action happening, it's got to be a short sentence. And if you're describing uh, something like a, like a setting or whatever, like an intro, you, you might want it to be a little bit longer. So with the word splat there, I wrote splat really quickly because um, it happened fast. The, uh, the chunk of mud hit the, the other warthog in the snout really quickly. So I wanted to emphasize that by having a really quick short sentence. Um, that's it, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for a storybook introduction and uh, your homework, reading as usual, making sure that, you're st uh, that you've got a great description of your character and a great description of your setting. Remember, the links to these templates are in the description down below. Um, and I will see you next time for when we do the build-up of our story. 
So until then, happy reading, happy, happy drawing, happy writing, and I will see you guys soon. Mm-hmm.